And there's a question that comes up. At what point do I stop making dua for something? At what point do I stop praying for something? See, there's <laughs> meaning, I'm not praying for something wrong, or I don't think I am. I asked Allah for something that I thought was good. At what point do I take a hint from the divine and say, you know what? Maybe I should not keep on making dua for the same thing over and over and over again. So that topic came up and I wanted to cover some of the foundations of that discussion on delayed ijaba, delayed answer to dua. And of course, eventually fade into that question um, as a whole. So let's lay the foundations to how we answer that question in the very first place. Number one, no is an answer. All right, so you can't say Allah didn't answer me if Allah answered no. All right, no is also an answer. So Allah says, "Call upon me, and I will answer you." So the answer is no. That's also an answer. All right. So we have sometimes what we take as no answer is actually the answer of no. And that's a very big problem when you're talking about uh, how you approach dua as a whole. So that's the very first thing. Number two, Allah lays the condition that if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to answer you, then make sure you answer Him as well. Uh, your relationship with God can't be transactional. I'm going to say that again. Your relationship with God can't be transactional. It can't be that I want something done, so let me go ahead and call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? Your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to be more than that. Okay? More than that. All right. The next thing in that regard, there are things that inherently prevent a dua from being answered. And that would be sins, right? There are ways in which sins can prevent a dua from being answered altogether. And then the last foundation really plays or, or really fades into this larger discussion of the delay that we as human beings are very hasty and hastiness is a relative term what that means is that what ajab what's considered slow and what's considered fast depends on the pace that is determined in accordance with a particular people's context meaning what how many of you remember dial up internet you guys remember dial up internet some of you don't you're showing your age all right <laughs> dial up internet Remember AOL 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, the funny sounds started getting a little less funny. Uh, it started logging on a little bit quicker. We switched between uh, Earthlink and all those different types of things and try to feel, uh, figure out dial-up internet. That was fast, or at some, what we would have considered fast has changed, right? What we would have considered fast has changed. Now you look at you know, how fast you can make your already fast just make it rapid right and sometimes it's so fast that you can't even tell so you have to do one of those speed tests right see how fast it's going so pace changes and our overall lack of attention span also plays into our expectation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in dua by the way all right so people were already created hasty in their nature and if you could define the 21st century, you could define it by many themes, but one of the things you could define it by is definitely haste. That we are a more hasty uh, portion of humanity than possibly any other group of humanity that's ever existed by virtue of what's available to us. Right? We are hastier now because we can get things done quicker now than ever before. With haste comes impatience, with haste comes laziness. With haste comes impatience, with haste comes laziness, both of which are detrimental to spirituality. Right? So now you got uh, Alexa. Alright? And she's not mahram to you. Alright? No, she's kind of weird. I'm just going to say that. Alright, I'm going to put that out there. It's something weird about having a robot in your room. Um, but turn off the lights, you just give commands and you get it done. You can't even get up to do something anymore. You just, everything is just spoken. So with ajab comes impatience and also laziness. 
both of the things that find themselves within the within the uh, the equation of du'a that Allah mentions, that the Prophet ﷺ mentions. Because the first one is, don't be hasty with Allah, don't get impatient with Allah. The second one is, have your own agency. You've got to do your part. So both of those things are eliminated by accessibility and by the relative ease with which we get everything else done in life. All right, the convenience and the relative ease of which we get everything else we've done in life. So let's put it this way. You want to upgrade your dial-up connection in du'a to you know, fiber without, without making the proper, uh, you know, the proper uh, jump within your own spirituality for that to actually be a realizable goal. All right? The Prophet ﷺ also mentioned that a general quality, al-ajalatu min ash-shaytan, hastiness is from the devil. Meaning, hastiness is not just problematic in du'a and supplication. Hastiness is problematic in everything that you do. Okay, hastiness means you ignore details, important details, even if you're doing something that's, you know, not necessarily bad, that's good in its nature. Hastiness means that um, you get frustrated very easily, right? Hastiness means that you're impatient with the promise of jannah because. I'm not really sure that Jannah is there and that I'm going to get what I really want to get in Jannah. So let me go ahead and try to create my imperfect paradise in this world. Because I'm not so sure about a perfect paradise anymore. Or I don't know that I'm going to make it to that perfect paradise quick enough. So let me go ahead and hurry up and create my flawed paradise, my imperfect paradise in this world. So there's impatience with the nafs, impatience with the soul. Right? So haste is a problematic quality in general that needs to be tamed. So if you want to tame hastiness in du'a, you need to tame hastiness as a quality. All right? Learn to be more composed, learn to pace yourself, learn to, learn to work for things that you're not necessarily going to see the result of in any uh, foreseeable future. All right? Learn to work things, learn to, to nourish seeds that will give their fruit later on in life. Right? If you think about successful business people, uh, most people that made it in life, if you think about it from a, from, from a dunyawi perspective, from a worldly perspective, from a material perspective, they did not get rich off of a get rich quick scam. Some people did. Some people just struck gold, you know, some, something happened and they just got really, really lucky quote unquote lucky, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested them. So they fell, they came across something and something happened to where they struck gold and it just happened. Most people worked really, really, really hard. But you can't package that in an infomercial. All right, just hard work and, you know, and, and grinding and, and doing what you have to do to succeed, right? Because that's not attractive, right? That's not what, that, that doesn't come in a can. It doesn't come packaged doesn't come with a nice ad. That's just hard work. And most people are not willing to put in the hard work for success to be realized from a worldly perspective. That translates into um, laziness with your spirituality too. Meaning if you're mediocre in your pursuit, you're mediocre in your pursuit. If you're mediocre in your pursuit of dunya, then you're mediocre in your pursuit of akhirah. If you are if you don't have ihsan, that's what the khatira was about today, right? The, the talk was about today. If you don't have ihsan, excellence in one thing, you're not going to have ihsan in anything. You have to develop a quality of ihsan, a quality of pursuit, a quality of perfection, a quality of attention to detail. 